evening. Thank you everyone for being here tonight. This is our effective virtual meetings training for all members, boards and commissions and NACs alike. Um, we've got Kim Carroll here, who's a fantastic trainer. And just uh, before I hand it over to, to her, I'll just uh, give you a bit of background on her. Kim has been training, coaching and designing programs for 15 years and online for the past six. So she's a seasoned pro. She currently helps organizations and educators to become intentional, engaged virtual teams. And she's got a a really great curricula curriculum for you here tonight. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to you, Kim. Thank you, Francesca. It's so nice of you all to join me this afternoon, this evening, and sorry to start talking about food. You may be heading into hungry mode <laughs> as we speak, so hang in there a little bit. Um, I'm going to turn off my background in a minute, uh, but I wanted to share with you, you told me some really interesting sounding places that I hope I get to visit someday when I come to Beaverton. And I wanted to share with you my town. I live in Greenville, South Carolina right now. Has anyone ever been there? If you've been here in the past seven or eight years, then someone probably took you to see this bridge because this is our one tourist attraction. <laughs> it's a pedestrian bridge and it's got some really cool architectural features about it. And it goes right over a park and it's a really beautiful spot right in our downtown. So if you ever come visit me, I will take you to see that bridge. And with that, I'm gonna let it go because um, sometimes the virtual backgrounds make your hands look funny. I wave my hands a lot, so I'm gonna just turn it off. I will also switch over to um, sharing my screen with you so that we can go ahead and get started here. And I think right now you should see my slides, do you? Yes, excellent. Okay, I'm experimenting with a new, new way tonight. So I'm trying to see everybody as I go here. Here we go. All right, so as we get started uh, this afternoon, some do's and don'ts, do be engaged, uh, unmute yourself as you desire to uh, participate. I have a lot of things I want to share, but I do want this to be a two-way conversation and workshop. So if you have questions, you can raise your virtual hand if you know how to do that. You can raise your actual hands and hopefully someone will see you. Um, Lani or Francesca, if I'm ignoring someone, can you just go ahead and shout out, hey, Jerome wants to talk or whatever, please feel free to do that. You also can use the chat box to write anything that comes up, any questions, and we'll either take care of it immediately or leave it till the end, depending on where we're at with the questions. Um, what else? Uh, using the chat box, uh, trying to stay on task, but feel free to put your comments, recommendations in the chat box and make this an interactive part of our workshop this evening. I would also ask you to, if you know how and don't mind, adding to your name the board that you're associated with. So you can do that by going to participant along the bottom. That should open up a menu on your right side. Find your name. And when you hover over it or click on it, I don't remember which, it should give you the option to rename. And with that, you can change your name, add to your name, and then in case you all haven't met in person or haven't seen each other in a while, everybody knows who everyone is affiliated with. Great, I see some additions here. As we're going through this evening, don't be too concerned about your kids, your cat, your hair, your mess in your house. Uh, in the work from home world, you are probably gonna see my cat, you know, come across the screen at any point here. Um, it's all fine. If you need to take a break, step away from the camera, stand up and stretch, please feel free to do that as we go along. Um, 
new information and learning sometimes needs a little movement involved and we don't always get that in a Zoom meeting. So please take care of yourself if, if the need comes up to move. You told me a little bit about Beaverton. So let's start by telling me how you are today at this moment. So on the one to nine rubber duck scale, how are things for you right now? And I would like you to use the chat box and put the number of the duck that corresponds with you at the moment and one word reason why. So for me right now, I have a two and my one word is camping. And if some of you are having issues because your device is small or, or you're not seeing well, number one is a big, inflated, proud, happy duck. And that kind of diminishes as the numbers go up. So number nine is the deflated in the water duck. So this is a scale of one being the best, nine being the worst. Ooh, okay, days off, kids going back to school. Ooh, that's exciting, okay. T, uh, COVID numbers up, that's no good. All right, I am glad to see how everyone's at. We have a lot of people hanging in there, feeling pretty good. Thank you for sharing these with us. And what we're going to be talking about today is, ooh, I'm liking these answers as I'm, I'm getting distracted. Retired gardens, this is good. What we're gonna be doing today is looking at a framework for engaged online engagement. And we are going to refer to this pyramid just a little bit, but I wanted to, you to get the big picture at the beginning really quick. So core values, for those of you that filled out a survey in the past couple of days, there were a couple questions about what are core values that you have that you want to exhibit in the meetings? And what does that look like? How does best practices fit into that? Most of our time today, we're going to be working on roles and tasks and tools and techniques, the top part. So we're gonna stay engaged and in motion as we go. The surveys that you filled out for me, you had, you want all of these things and we all do. And one person even said, yes, all of these things. But the biggest numbers, 40% friendly and 53% welcoming. So something that you're really looking to exhibit in these meetings, welcoming and friendly. And then your big challenge, goes right along with that. The big challenge was interaction. So 33% saying interacting as a board and then 40% uh, said getting the visitors and the other people to also interact. So these things are on your mind. These are the things we're going to talk about. You may have, you may hear some ideas this evening that you think, oh, that is not gonna work for my group. And that's possible. But I want you to think about how you could tweak some of these ideas so that they might work for your group. There's a thousand different possibilities and I'm just gonna throw some at you this evening and see what might work. And I know you have a lot of different things that you do in your, in your group. So everyone's gonna look a little bit different here. So this document is from the before times when People were meeting face to face and um, Francesca and some folks prepared this for the boards to help you think through how to create a welcoming environment. And all of these suggestions are brilliant and most of them pretty simple to do when you're face to face. Now, what does this look like when we're online? How do we create this kind of environment when maybe you haven't even met your fellow board members in person. And how do we build a community and how do we build good teamwork and how do we make it welcoming when we don't see each other? And so that's my first question for you. And I'm gonna give you five quick minutes to work with a smaller group and answer this question, how do we do this now? Or how could we do this? If you have some ideas, that maybe you haven't implemented yet, but maybe we could give it a try. 
this is the time to think about that. So I'm gonna have you work in a breakout room with a few people. And I pulled just a few sections of this document so you can focus a little bit. You'll choose someone in your group to be the recorder. Uh, a good recorder is someone who, who has access to the screen I'm gonna show you and knows how to work it well. And as you're talking through this document, you're gonna add to my board. And let me show you what it looks like. Oops, gonna let me, there we go. Um, okay, just to confirm, did my screen switch over? Yes, awesome. So I pulled these two sections. You're gonna talk in your small group. The person who's the recorder, I'll give you access in just a second is gonna to come to the left side of the screen and look at the menu, I'm looking around the screen right now. You're gonna click on sticky note, choose a color you like, write your answer that you talk about in your group. Keyboard doesn't wanna work, answer. Click save and you'll have a sticky note, which you can then move around to anywhere you want it to be on the board, okay? So start thinking about this question for a second while I get you into some groups. How are you currently making people feel welcome and part of the group and invited? So in the chat box, you should now be able to find a link to allow you to open that whiteboard, the Jamboard. It's not important that everyone opens it. If you're on a phone and it's too complicated to open another tab, don't worry about it. Someone in your group will be there, I'm sure. Okay, I see all of you popping into the documents, so I know you're getting there. So let me open the breakout rooms. Your question is, how are we adjusting to being welcoming and inviting when working online? The room is open, you can click join, and I'll see you back here in about five minutes. Hello, everyone, welcome back. Thanks, Jerome, thanks, Kathleen. <laughs> Thank you guys. We had a good one. All right. So it looks like every group figured out how to navigate the Jamboard and make sticky notes. And um, I'll just give you a second. You have been looking at it, but take just a second. Karen, you have a circle. Um, <laughs> the rest of us look at uh, what everyone has said. Just take a second to read through. What are we supposed to be doing? I don't understand. Oh, just taking a look at the board and reading the, the post-its of the other groups. Where's the board? Oh, you know what? Let me share my screen. That will make it easier. No, we don't have to. I think oh. you should see it now. Ta-da. Yeah. <laughs> Great, so I see a lot of similarities. Um, and some really nice specific things that you can do, like greeting people by name, having an icebreaker, um, asking people how they heard about the group. And then I see some that are more general or more broad, like just make sure everyone feels as welcome as they would feel in person. So our, our challenge today is to figure out how to do that specifically. Um, so I've had a chance to meet with the staff liaisons and with the board chairs and vice chairs in the last couple of weeks. And I would like to share with you some of the things that came out of those sessions as well. So I'm gonna switch the screen um, back to the presentation here and share with you a couple of things that came out of that that we're gonna cover today very quickly because we have checklist documents 
to give you that came out of those sessions. Some of the things that we've come up with that we wanna make sure to do is before the meeting, the idea of actually having our own checklist that we follow so that we're really ready and prepared when it's time to get started. And preparing your space was another thing that we talked about. And we'll take about two minutes today and cover that as well. For the meeting itself, we talked about how to use eye contact and how to use body language to show your engagement and also to get engagement from other folks. The second yellow one on the top there, um, to try to create moments of engagement at least three times during a meeting. Usually that looks like the beginning, the end, and somewhere in the middle. <coughs> Points for engagement. Um, you all talked about icebreakers, and that's something that we talked about as well. We talked about on the pink card there, getting help from the team, that's you all, to monitor the chat box, to make people feel welcome, and to take on some roles possibly that would help facilitate engagement and a welcoming environment. In the green one, we talked about creating social space before or after the official meeting. So uh, the idea of taking five minutes, maybe asking everyone to come in a little bit early to just check in, say hello, share how your day was before the official meeting starts. In the orange uh, boxes, we talked a lot about the chat box and how to use that systematically, how to use it with intention, how to maybe turn it on and off so that you don't lose control of it, but you can also bring people in to share at specific moments during the meeting. So these are some of the things that you should look out for that might be happening in the next couple of meetings that you start having, because these are the things that we were talking about. And your board looked pretty similar to this. So if you're ready, I'm going to go really quickly through some of those setup things that you might want to think about. Please, again, use the chat box to ask any questions. And I'm going to go through this because you're going to get a checklist of your own when this is over. So you don't have to memorize this or know all of the details yet. One of the things that is really challenging in an online meeting is creating connection as you know, and that's because we are flat screens, a lot of things are difficult, and we don't have full body language capability. We're just a little tiny screen. So some things you wanna think about that highlight you being a human and a person to connect with behind the screen is having good lighting. And by good, I mean, you're not backlit. You don't have like a light behind you and you look like a scary shadow in front. Um, thinking about your lighting, thinking about your camera angle. Usually the recommendation is your camera should be at your eye level or above. So people aren't looking up your nose. And also creating a power dynamic that you are above them. Don't need to do that. Um, thinking about your space, not the entire meeting at least, being this close to the camera, it's really very disturbing sometimes. Backing up a little bit so people can see your body language. Using the space, when you're engaged, you naturally lead, lean in. And so using the space so people can see you're a human and not just a floating head. Um, having engaged posture and making eye contact. Eye contact, of course, is super tricky because it's not actually eye contact. You're either looking at the camera, giving you the impression that I'm looking at your into your eyes, or I'm looking at your faces, and it's a little bit different. One trick that I use is I take a little sticky note with, and I draw a little person on it. And I stick it right next to the camera. You can't actually see the camera when it's dark in my room like it is today. And that reminds me to that there are people in that camera and I need to look at it occasionally. Oh, sorry, if you need to leave, thank you for joining. Um, we'll be able to send you the recording, I think, soon. You don't have to get fancy with your equipment. You can, but you don't have to. You can see we can improvise with a chair, with natural light and the Zoom 
look of 2020, which is business on the top and pajamas or shorts on the bottom. It's, it's totally fine. It's, it's, you're, you're inviting people into your space with a natural background. Also can experiment with uh, virtual backgrounds. I saw some of you had some. I had one at the beginning. So you can play with those uh, as another way to engage people. Thinking about communication, we have to adapt a little bit to make space for participation in a different way than if we're face-to-face. -face. So at the beginning, it's important to communicate ground rules and expectations. Um, I had a slide, feel free to do this, think about this, don't worry about this. That allows people a little more sense of safety to know how they're expected to act and react in the meeting. Same with giving guidance and modeling. Um, when I asked you a question, I put my answer first. I'm a two, because I'm going camping this weekend and I'm excited. Using meta communication is just talking about what we're doing, right? So I'll tell you, give me just a second while I flip my screen, or I have a second screen. So if you see me looking to the side, it's not because I'm distracted by my dog, I'm, I'm looking at another screen. So letting people into why things might be moving at a pace that they're moving at. And being more comfortable with pauses. My other job is teaching English language learners and as, when I do that, you have to give people a lot of time to produce a response in their new language before they answer. On Zoom, it's technology and it's people not sure how to start, when to start. So longer pauses tend to be something that we need when we're on this kind of platform. So when you ask someone to participate, uh, give them a minute to type the answer, to think about it. It can be a little bit, um, awkward, it can feel awkward, but give an extra minute for people to participate. Using names, some of you mentioned that on your sticky note, and Francesca did a great job of this as you all were, as you all were logging in today. So recognizing the people who are showing up, if you know them, a quick comment, um, asking them how they are with a rubber duck meme or <laughs> just asking, uh, letting people know that they're welcome and they're valued. And making sure you have some sort of welcome and some sort of exit task for people. And again, uh, three points of engagement and make sure you spend some time listening and looking at reactions as much as you can. This is where as a team, you can all work together, right? Not one person, maybe it's the the chair, can't do all of these things at once. So we're gonna talk about different roles that you might have in a virtual meeting setting and some tools and techniques, kind of at the same time. And I'm gonna get you back talking again with each other in just a second. So working online at the beginning, I don't know about for you, but for me, it felt like I was juggling a whole new set of tasks that I never had to think about when I was face-to-face -face giving trainings or teaching, working with folks. A lot of things that happen naturally when we're all together have to be more intentional online. Do you know what I'm talking about? Does anybody have any examples of things that just happen naturally seems to be when we're face to face? That when we're online, it's a little awkward or harder to do. Anyone have an example? One example that I have is people's sense of humor. I noticed my daughters have been doing Zoom with their teacher forever and ever. And then they went to their first class in person and they came home and they said, he has a sense of humor. <laughs> you know, they were like so thrilled by it because it, it, it's hard to interpret someone's humor, I think, through the screen. That's a really good point. Through the screen and also through chat, right? If, if we're chatting, it's yeah. hard to convey the natural humor we might have in a physical presence. Does anyone else have one that they've noticed? Like reacting to someone's nonverbal behavior from everything from a sneeze to 
uh, you know, looking away or something like that, it's much harder. Do you think it's much harder because we're not, we're not looking at each other's faces as much or just because of the technology? I'm wondering myself, so. Yeah, I mean, I think in a real group, you have panoramic vision <laughs> where you can see multiple people at once. You can see things out of the corner of your eye. And I find it much harder to do that. I can look at one person at a time on Zoom and not really multiple people. And in fact, the first studies are coming out from this past year of teams that work virtually that hadn't previously. And exactly these two things are the biggest issues that are making teams feel less productive. One is um, the inability to read body language and therefore the inability to listen intently. And they're very related. Right, so I can see your face, but I'm not getting the full panorama of what's happening. And I yeah. asked some of the people because when you share a screen, then you only see a fraction of the folks who are on. And also kind of had talked a little bit about Zoom etiquette, um, sort of making those ground rules apparent, for example. Um, it is better to have your screen on if you have the capability to do so because that limited amount of face-to-face -face and body language is, is totally diminished if somebody is a black screen. It's really challenging. And I've been working with teachers who are teaching to seas of black screens at times. And, and sometimes it's because of bandwidth issues, but it's really challenging. Yeah. Exactly. It's really challenging. I find it extraordinarily difficult to have organic conversations. Uh, speech is completely stilted in this environment. We can't, the, the, as we all know now, um, it's very, you can't talk over each other. Um, and it's very, it's, some people seem to be much, much better at getting their, their um, getting started than, than, than I am. Um, I'm often finding myself not quite making it in time. Um, it's too late. I, I miss the opportunity to speak because someone else has jumped in faster. Anyway, it's very challenging to have a natural, uh, natural kind of conversation. I find that too. I'm a sort of slow thinker and um, I don't know. I. I don't, I'm not a jumper in, I have to, I'm really sort of measured. And I think when people are, I don't want to interrupt anyone also. I feel like I wait, my lag time is people think it's tech issues or something. And so they start and then I start. And I don't know, maybe being socialized as a female, I think I don't want to step on anyone's toes. It's, it's a whole different layer of awkward for me. Ah, that's the t-shirt of 2020. A whole new layer of awkward. I totally agree. And part of it is the technology, right? Because we can't speak over each other. Both microphones don't work at the same time. And then you add the culturalization and all of those things on top and it makes things really awkward. And this is why it's important that we think about things like giving longer wait time um, and creating, there's different tricks you can use. Uh, if you're moderating a meeting to get everyone to participate simultaneously or breakout rooms can be good for that. Or even letting people know ahead of time, giving them time to prepare. So in five minutes, we're going to open the chat box and ask for your opinion on such and such. Be ready. Be thinking about it. I'm also the, the slow thinker. I need more time to give you my answer. And that helps me immensely when the person facilitating will say, okay, be ready because this question's coming up or while I'm doing this, think about this. And so, and even now I can see everyone's face and I can read a little bit who wants to talk, how by maybe they're leaning in a little bit, maybe their eyes open or they're, or they're doing this, right? So I can say, um, Kathleen, let's hear from you. And then Lanny, you're next, right? So I can kind of put these cues out 
as ways to invite people in. And so think about how you could adapt that for, especially for if you have guests in and you can't see their faces at all, because I know you're using, um, you know, you don't see everyone who's at your meeting necessarily. So these are just some ideas to think through how they might work for you in your meetings and some different roles that might come out of the process of wanting to do these things. So I put roles in online meetings from casual to formal because these could be casual. For example, I asked Francesca before the meeting if she would do the honor of um, being in charge of the chat box in case I miss anything or um, just to be aware of the chat box. I didn't bring it up at the beginning of today's meeting because I forgot, but I would call this a casual. I just asked her, hey, could you keep an eye? You could also do it in a much more formal way. This could be someone's job where for this meeting, they are going to be in charge of the chat box. And that means they are going to be putting things in the chat box people need to know. They are going to be writing in the phone number for people who are calling in, or they're going to be putting information out, or you know, you could you could formalize that kind of role. Just depends on what you what your meetings look like and what would help you the most. So but isn't it go ahead. Excuse me. Yes, um, yes. the chat box I find really distracting. Um, if we're in a meeting and people are constantly posting information, links, um, uh, different different things to in, into the chat box. Um, I just never go there because if I do, then I'm going to miss what people are talking about. Mm -hmm. So what's the, is there a generally accepted protocol for how to do that? I, I just, I never pay attention to the chat box because I don't have time. Yeah. And I think there's, I would say there's several categories of how you can use the chat box. One way that I like that might be effective for some of your meetings is to turn it on and off. So maybe at the beginning, you invite everyone to write something, to say hello, to say where they're from, to share with something, and then let them know, okay, now we're gonna turn off the chat box for a while and it will be back on at this point for you to share ABC. That way it isn't distracting people, everyone's staying focused on the meeting. So that might be something to experiment with or, um, having some people use it in a specific intentional way. So making sure people know the ground rules. Hey, please stay on task. Don't use the chat box just to say, oh, I really like your hair today, you know, like to keep it on task. And that's another way to do it. Or you can have that person who is in charge of the chat box be the one who is reading it. And then Spencer, you, you don't want to open it. You don't have to because you know Francesca is going to pull anything important out of there and say it out loud. And so this is something that you have to talk together with how you would like that to function in your group. Um, sometimes turning it off completely is the most appropriate thing to do. But if that's the only way for your guests to reach you, it might feel a little bit like a wall. And so I would ask you to consider, is there a way to have it on at moments and off at other moments? And so Spencer, I didn't answer your question. There's not one right way to use it. There's multiple right ways to use it. Just what works best for your group. One thing that I found that was really um, invaluable with the chat box is um, that when people are giving their information about contacting, uh, their contact information, and people are putting that in the chat box. At the end of the meeting, you can go down to the ellipses and save the chat and it goes to your computer and then you don't have to be writing stuff down. Yes, that's a good way to do it. I also will mention going back to the laying the ground rules and, and making sure everyone is comfortable and safe. The chat box for your meetings, if I remember correctly, is all public record. And so you want people to know that up front. That's not something that's a good point. To surprise people with, right? So if you're going to be using the chat box, make sure that everyone knows their meetings are recorded and so is the chat box. I I have never been taught how to use the chat box. No one has ever said, okay, this is how you use it. Because 
when I go and try to to put something in the chat box, it mine never comes out the same as anybody else's. It looks weird. Huh. So you know, I need instructions on how to use the chat box. Yes, that is a perfect example, which I did not do today, of the kind of things you want to make sure that people know either at the beginning or as you're giving the instruction for using the chat box. So um, next time I say use the chat box, Karen, I want to walk us through how to do that as we do it so that you, you know how to do it for next time. For now, I'm going to have you focus uh, back on the slide for a minute and think a little bit about some roles that might help your meetings run more smoothly. These are some that have come up in other meetings and trainings that I've been a part of someone being the curator, basically pulling out the important information from the chat, so not everyone has to be focused on it. Someone acting as a host of the event where um, the information is happening, but there is someone who will stop and say, okay, this is where uh, we want to ask for your participation. So we're opening up the chat and we want to know this. I know that may not be appropriate for all of your situations, but something to think about if it might fit. Maybe someone to prepare that welcome icebreaker or something to do or say at the end to get that engagement. Could be someone's role or job. Um, some of you have tech people running your meetings, so some of you may need additional assistance. Sometimes it really takes a whole team to make this run smoothly. And you might have someone who functions as a timekeeper if you have a strict time schedule. Their job is literally to let you know, hey, we're, we're coming to the end of this section and ready to move on to the next. So just think in your heads, in your particular group, what kind of roles might exist that you could help to share the load of all the things that happen in an online meeting? And moving right on to tools and tasks, in this brief meeting we've had today, are there any techniques or tools for engagement that we've used today? Or just maybe you can name them, list them. What are some things that we used in today's meeting? Usually Zoom related. You can type in the chat box or you can unmute and talk. This is for you. I'll Oh, sorry, Kathleen. It's it's quick. This is for you. I, I I love the Jamboard idea. I love. I, this is my first time using that, and the, the idea to put everyone's thoughts on the same page and everyone's interacting at the same time. Um, I thought that was uh, pretty cool. So, um, yeah. Say, sorry, uh, Kathleen. Go ahead. You, that was what I was gonna say. I really like the uh, little visualization of like a sticky board for people's and sort of brains brainstorming session where you can all access it and visualize what people are saying? Uh, the one we used today was a Jamboard, which is an external tool. But there is one that is internal to um, Zoom as well. So I didn't use that because I wanted to have those images posted ready for you and not just pop in and have to do that while we were all together. But there is one also right built into Zoom that you can use too. So. And it's cool, you can do a lot of really fun things with it, especially if you're trying to brainstorm, get ideas, vote on something, okay? So that's one, I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoyed that. I like the sticky notes myself. Other things we used is um, using the chat box, that whiteboard, uh, the naming feature where um, you could go in and change your name. And I asked you to add your association but you also could use this as part of an icebreaker or something at the end to change your name to the name of the last restaurant you went to or the answer to a trivia question you ask or anything just to use that so you can see everyone all at once as answers it can be kind of fun to use. I started with a virtual background with a question on it to get everyone thinking and engaged and starting a conversation when we started. You can use backgrounds for that. You can use backgrounds for team building. Maybe you have a background for everyone in your particular organization. That could be kind of fun. You can post trivia questions. You could have an image of somewhere around town where everyone has to try to guess 
where that photo was taken. There's a lot of fun things you can do with the backgrounds. And um, I'm gonna share with you um, a sheets, a checklist that tells you how to do that as well. We did not use the polling feature tonight, but there is a polling feature in Zoom. You have to put the questions in before you start the meeting, but then you can ask the question and everyone can vote. And using reactions is another one to get people engaged. And speaking of reactions, here is a list. And I would like you to use the reactions and tell me which of these do you think might be valuable to you in your meeting. To find the reactions, hold on. I can't see my screen as you do because I'm sharing my screen. Spencer's got a thumbs up, okay. Does anyone not know how to use the reactions? Wave your hand in the air. I don't see any waves though. Okay, so the whiteboard, everybody likes the whiteboard. Francesca likes the polling feature. Hazel says reactions, <laughs> reactions on reactions, good. Um, Susan in the chat box says the Jamboard, the annotation feature, yeah. Great, thank you for sharing. So this is a simple way you can use reactions. And as of two days ago, apparently, my system has not updated yet. Um, all emojis will be available in the Zoom chat. And I believe on the reactions as well. So Lonnie's celebrating this. <laughs> you will have all the emojis, all the emotions that you from. Are, are um, the, um, on the polling, can you do a secret ballot? Secret voting on that? Yeah. Francesca, do you wanna answer that? Yeah, I was just going to say the, the polling feature is an aggregate uh, um, uh, report in terms of just everybody who answered that question. It's not specified by who answered it. So yes, that would work for that kind of uh, situation. Thank you. But Francisca, in a, um, uh, if someone makes a motion, um, and we've discussed it, and then we take a vote. That shouldn't be done by polling, should it? No, in that in that instance, no. That has to be record. That's gonna. That needs to be recorded. Yeah. All right. So, one more question for you. Did you find anything today or any anything we talked about that you could use in your meeting to create a more engaged, more welcoming environment? Give me a thumbs up if you if you have a have some ideas spinning around your head, literal or <laughs> virtual thumbs up. <laughs> Awesome. So let me go back really quickly to this screen that I showed you before. And it's kind of the same question, but I want to share, share with you the annotation feature. So if you go to uh, my screen, it's at the top. And when you scroll over, Kim is sharing her screen you should see a button that says annotate. When you click on annotate, it's gonna let you draw, make a stamp, write something. It's under more options. Francesca found it. So what I would like you to do is either use the stamp and put a stamp on the sticky note that you're going to work on or think more about. If you have something else you would like to add, you can use the text feature. And you can write on it.
And so this is an example of using the Zoom annotation feature. Did everybody figure out? And is anybody stuck? Lisa, do you see where it says uh, Kim is sharing her screen? Okay, scroll over that. Francesca, you said it might be under other on my yeah. screen. Yeah, so at the top of the screen in a green bar, it says you are viewing Kim Carroll's screen. Next to that on the right, there's view options. It's a drop down menu. So click the arrow to get the drop down. And then in the second um, to last little box, there's request remote control and then there's annotate. So click annotate. So Zoom does not have sticky notes, but Zoom has annotation. And this is a great tool for taking a quick look at what people would like preferences, voting kinds of things. Um, if you've done design design sprint kind of work, this is a really popular tool to use to see where people fall on a, on a scale of things. So, oh, I see a lot of stuff going on. So I think you figured it out, excellent. And just uh, as another tool that I have used in, in, in my travels, um, aside from Jamboard, is a, another web-based tool called Mentimeter. It can create word clouds. It can do the kind of sticky note. It's a, it's a slightly different setup in that people enter in their responses, but then it starts populating in whatever kind of style um, you're looking to have that. And I know you were looking into getting that set up I, and usable. I finally, I finally have it, so. Mentimeter is great. That's one of my other favorite tools. So definitely check into that. Great. Okay. I'm going to clear the board here. Let me clear everyone's drawings. Say goodbye to the drawings. Oh, maybe it's not going to work. There we go. All right. Okay. Now I can't. Hold up. I'm trying to move my board here. There we go. All right. So we'll take any questions that anybody has if you want to talk more about anything else. Um, I hope that you leave thinking about the virtual environment with intention. With intention, we can create a welcoming, engaging online environment. Is it the same as face-to-face? -face? It is not. But can we get our work done, build strong teams, and get to know each other and be welcoming and inclusive? I think we can. It just takes intention and looking at things in a little bit of a different way. I mentioned to you that there are some checklists that I'm gonna share with you. And I actually put a whole board of resources together. If you're interested, if you like this kind of thing, if you wanna see articles on icebreakers to use on Zoom, research about what works and what doesn't, um, all the stuff I like to geek out about, I made a Wakelet board for you and um, I think Francesca will send that uh, link to you in an email tomorrow once I get it to her. Um, and it just has all of this stuff. It should have this slide show in it as well and checklists on how to be ready, how to set up, how to have your camera and your light and all of that stuff as well. So um, an hour is not a long time, so you can do more on your own if you'd like. And I would like to say thank you so much for uh, your engagement. I really enjoyed seeing your faces and uh, starting to think through some of these issues. I know going back to face-to-face -to -face is happening. Here it's happening, really, it's happened. I mean, it's, it's on us. It's a little disconcerting <laughs> being in other people's space so much these days. But I don't think that this part is gonna go away. I think we'll in some way, shape or form continue to have hybrid, have, have people be able to join us in this way as well as face to face. So let's use it for what it's, what it's good for. Great. And hybrid meetings are coming. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs>
Well, again, we just want to thank you all for your time this evening, for giving us an hour of your time. Like Kim said, an hour is certainly not long enough to go through all of uh, the, the myriad things that we could possibly talk about for this kind of content. But we also want to respect that many of us are in Zoom meetings all day long. So, you know, we didn't want to make this training too long and induce even more Zoom fatigue. But we hope that you got something valuable out of the hour that we spent together tonight. And like Kim said, I will definitely be sending out a follow-up email that has the recording from tonight's training. It's got all the resources that she's talking about and the presentation slide deck. And as always, if you have any questions or need anything else, I'm just an email or a phone call away. But otherwise, please uh, go enjoy the rest of your evening. And it was really great seeing you all. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot, Kim. Thanks, Francisca. <laughs>